According to Anna Draction, she was born in 1836 in Romania, the daughter of a wealthy cattleman. By 1849, Anna resided in the Banat military frontier area of the Austrian Empire, more specifically the village of Vladimirovac, which now lies within Serbia. She attended a private school in Panchevo and following her time in education, she returned to live in her father's house. When she was 20 years old, she had a passionate affair with an Austrian officer. However, the relationship turned sour when he abandoned her, deserting Anna, who had contracted syphilis from him. Within the confines of her father's home, Anna dedicated her time to reading publications mainly regarding medicine and chemistry, and preferred to live a solitary life. Furthermore, throughout her isolation, Anna learned five languages. Her father then arranged the marriage of his daughter to a much older man named either Pistov or Di Pistonia. Sources differ on the exact details. Once wed, the couple became parents to 11 children over the course of 20 years. However, despite the marriage reportedly being a happy one, Anna Pistova and her husband endured heartbreaking loss. Of their 11 children, only one survived into adulthood and became a merchant. During her 50s, Anna was widowed. One wing of her dwelling became what she called an alchemist's workshop, where she experimented with various herbs and spices. She hired a maid who spread the word about her work, telling of her extraordinary capabilities as a healer and herbalist. Anna tended to sit alone by a window, staring out onto the village streets. Wearing all black and a headscarf, she would often go outside and converse with passers-by. As her reputation flourished, Anna was given the Serbian-Croatian name Baba Anojka, translated into English as Grandmother Annie. Farmers' wives were her most frequent customers, who sought out healing medicines for their hard-working husbands, and through the trading of her homemade products, Anna earned enough money to live comfortably. Soldiers would knock on her door, pleading for her to concoct one of her magic potions, as she called them, so that once ingested, they would be so sick that they would not have to participate in military service. Other popular products from her laboratory included magic water, love potions and devil's water. The two former, in particular, had traces of poison within them, such as mercury, and were bought by many women who wished to kill their spouses. The love potion contained traces of arsenic and various other untraceable elements. In the presence of her clients who wanted the poison, Anna would ask, how heavy is the sacrifice? Or, how heavy is the problem? In other words, she was requesting the estimated weight of the intended victim. Once known, she would be able to calculate the exact dosage required to end the person's life, which she also perfectly predicted as being eight days after ingestion. A few of the clients themselves were unaware that the bottles contained any type of poison, and rumours circulated around Vladimirovats that Baba Anoika held abilities of a sorceress, gaining her many nicknames such as the Banat Witch and the Witch of Vladimirovats. Many of those who fell victim to her potions were young and healthy men, and it was estimated that Anna's alchemy was responsible for between 50 and 150 deaths. In 1914, Anna was put on trial for providing poisons for many murders. However, she was acquitted. During the 1920s, Anna's business had become majorly successful and she hired a saleswoman called Yubina Milankov, who brought clients to Anna's home. 
the value of her magic water skyrocketed between 2,000 and 10,000 dinars, which despite being obsolete in today's terms would be between 900 and 4,500 Great British Pounds or 1,100 and 5,500 US dollars. At the time, no suspicions were raised due to the fact that almost all of Anna's clients were the ones murdering members of their family and autopsies or further investigations were not requested by any loved ones or friends of the deceased. A loyal client named Stana Momirov, who had bought healing medicines and herbs from Anna in the past, purchased Baba Anoika's infamous magic water in January of 1924 with the intention of killing her husband, Lazar Ludoshki. As expected, Lazar died within the space of eight days. Stana quickly moved on from the death of her husband and married another man from her local village. Her new husband's uncle mysteriously died a few months later and police were brought in to investigate. Having questioned Stana, she did not hesitate in incriminating Baba Anoika. Two years passed with no further action by authorities in terms of confronting Anna. In December of 1926, she sold another bottle of her magic water to Sima Momirov, no known relation to Stana, and his wife Sofia. The couple plotted to murder Sima's 70-year-old father, Nikola Momirov. Allegedly, Nikola was an alcoholic who had been abusive towards his son and his family. Sofia heard whispers of Baba Anoika from a woman named Danica Stoyich and paid her a visit where she purchased some magic water. Sofia gave the poison to Olga Sturza, Nikola Momirov's 16-year-old granddaughter. It is unknown whether Olga, who was ordered to pour the concoction into one of Nikola's drinks, was aware that the liquid was poisonous. Nicola drank the water and died 15 days later. On the 15th of May 1928, Baba Anoika, at the age of 90, was arrested by authorities. Stana Momirov, Sima and Sofia Momirov, Yubina Milankov, Danica Stoyich and Olga Sturza were arrested and charged with the murders of Nikola Momirov and Lazar Ludoshki. The bodies of Lazar and Nikola were exhumed and autopsies were performed on both men at the University of Belgrade. The doctor who conducted the autopsies testified at trial that traces of arsenic were found in Nikola and Lazar's bodies. The trial of Baba Anoika began in June of 1929 and results from analysis of chemicals found at Anna's property confirmed both her possession and use of poison. The prosecutor of the case sought the death penalty for all of the accused men and women except for Olga Sturza, for whom he believed a prison sentence was more appropriate as she was a minor. Sima and Sofia defended themselves at trial, making the point that they were both unaware that the medicine contained poison. The couple stated that they strongly believed in Anna's alleged supernatural abilities and it was some sort of dark magic that had claimed Nicola's life. When Stana took to the stand, she claimed that she bought a bottle from Anna because she wished to cure her husband, Lazar, of alcoholism, and once again stated that she was not aware that the dose she gave him would be fatal. Olga Sturza defended herself by saying that she was a minor at the time of the murders and was also completely unaware that the drink she gave to her grandfather, Nicola, would kill him. Sophia challenged Olga's claims, stating that the 16-year-old did have knowledge that the liquid contained poison. 
When Baba Anoika spoke at her trial, she denied the charges and insisted that she had never sold any magic water or love potions and that the entire case against her was a web of lies created by her alleged sales agent, Yubina Milankov, shifting responsibility of her own crimes onto the defenceless elderly lady. The verdict was announced on the 6th of July 1929. Baba Anoika was sentenced to 15 years in prison, being named as an accomplice to the murders of Lazar and Nikola. Stana Momirov and Sofia Momirov were both given life sentences as the women were named as the main perpetrators. Sophia's husband, Sima, was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment and Yubina Milankov was sentenced to 8 years of incarceration. Charges against Danica Stoyic and Olga Sturza were dropped as the pair were officially acquitted. The defendants and the prosecutor were unhappy with the verdict and both appealed the decision. The prosecutor believed that the convicts should face capital punishment. As a result, Sophia and Sima admitted that they did in fact have knowledge of the poison. However, the other defendants stuck by their original statements. On the 30th of November 1929, the final verdict was delivered. Baba Anoika was once again sentenced to 15 years behind bars with the addition of hard labour. Stana and Sophia were given the same sentence as before, life imprisonment. Sima's sentence was extended from 15 years to life imprisonment and Yubina's sentence was extended from 8 years to 10 years. Olga and Danica were for the second time acquitted. At 98 years of age, Baba Anoika was released from prison due to old age. She lived at her late father's house in Vladimirovats for a further two years before passing away in 1938, having lived for over 100 years, leaving behind her notorious reputation as one of the oldest serial killers on record. <laughs> 